I think money got low. Money got low, and it wasn't as abundant um, for the powers that be. So they started going with more with what they knew were was working. Um, and in the midst of that, consciousness would get lost in the shuffle. Um, Jay-Z said it best. Truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense, but I did five mil. I ain't been rhyming like common sense, you know? So when, I mean, it's just one of them things where people are fickle themselves, you know? Even the Bible say the origins of a man's heart is dark, you know? So, and what I mean by that is it could be four corners in a room. It could be basketball over there. It could be football over there. It could be growing butterflies, whatever, in the fourth corner. The moment that a fight breaks out in the last corner, that's where everybody attention. Usually that's where they're going to go, where the most excitement, adrenaline rushes is. So if the powers that be see, okay, well, I can triple, you know, my money by catering to this, then that's what I'm going to cater to. Um, and which in turn is what's happening with Chicago. Hmm. You know, nobody cared about what kind of exposure you were giving to these individuals that are caught up in this war that's been raging since before they were born. You know what I'm saying? So now we got more money for more guns and more connections, you know, to do more things. It doesn't change the fact that there's still a war going on. It's just now everybody's seeing it. So they feel like they got something else to prove. Numbers didn't decrease. The numbers increased. You know what I'm saying? The murder numbers, you mean? The murder yeah. rate. So it's um it's one of them things. If you ask me how I Which look I at am. it, you you know what I'm saying? I look at it like that. And <clears throat> it get deep, man. Because then at the same time, while you have that going on, you have to take into consideration the Reagan era, what happened with the crack babies and the, the crack fathers who wasn't around to raise their children. You know what I'm saying? And the elders, they ain't got the strength, the time, or the patience. You know, what an old head, 60-year-old, 50-year-old, you know what I'm saying, about to tell a 13-year-old, 15-year-old, 18-year-old running around with a 100-shot clip, like, or a 30-shot clip, like, he ain't about to tell him nothing. And he on five drugs instead of the basic two. Like, so... Basic two being weed and alcohol. Yeah. Just making sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's a combination of things. What's the way out? What what do we what do we need to do? As First people? and foremost, it's, it's on the individual. Like, because you really got some people that don't want to get out. Or they don't even know what getting out is about. This is all they know. You got to deal with that first. You got to deal with the person that I don't care what you're talking about. You got to deal with that person. That kid that ain't trying to go to school. You understand what I'm saying? That female that ain't trying. You got to separate who's who from who's who. You got to put the sheeps with the sheeps and the wolves with the wolves. You know what I'm saying? That's what you have to do. Um when you do that, then you can say, okay, well, who wants to get out? And then you deal with that. It all is it's all on the individual. For real. You know, what what do you want? What are you willing to sacrifice and work for? Because whatever it is, it's gonna come with bumps and bruises. Right. Whatever it is. And you're going to have to do some extraordinary things and work extraordinarily hard in some shape, form, or fashion to be more than average. You got to be willing to do what the next person ain't. Willing to persist when the next person is is getting impatient. All of these things matter. 
All of it matter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, now that we've drifted off into this social tangent, uh, maybe we can come a little bit back uh, for the music. For the people who don't know, this is Quan, uh, the man, the myth, the legend. Appreciate it, bro. Came out with a single. It came out with some music. And, you know, quickly kind of went as fast as he came, but he never actually left. You know, there's a couple stories here and there, but the music kind of stopped for a second. What's What's been going on, bro? What's, where have um, you been? I came, I came from basically two small cities, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Newport, Bad News, Virginia. And you don't, people don't really get out. People, people don't really get out. Can you ask that question again? Can you hold the mic like not the way you're holding it, covering the, yeah, yeah, can you hold it under? Oh, they want the logo out. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Basically, I came from two cities, and people don't usually make it out of the, those small cities. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's like a wonder of the world. So I ain't know nothing about breaking records, campaigns, none of that. I came in, I came straight off the street, fresh out the penitentiary into the music industry, straight out the field. Um, so I didn't know a lot about uh, breaking records. I ain't know a lot about. Um, getting with different people and utilizing um relationships um how'd you how'd you end up coming out the penitentiary and meeting Nas? i'm sure this is a story you've told before but um i met a guy by the name of norman keys hurt through my pops he had a relationship with a female named suzanne mates who used to manage studios in the new york, new york area um they introduced me to an engineer named kevin kraus who introduced me to DJ LES. I let LES hear some of the music I was working on. He loved it. Um, that in turn, me and him did a few records. Nas heard those, loved them. Um, I flew out to Miami and I stayed out there for like a month, something like a couple of weeks. Um, I worked on the um, Streets Disciple album with Nas. Um, and that's the, when I got there, that's when I heard the, the Just a Moment record and Just a Moment became a hit record. And, um, me and Oz, we had a great relationship, but it didn't pan out like it should have on the business aspect of it. And so I asked for, um, a release out of my contract with Atlantic and, um, Ill Will Records. And, um, I just was like, I'll do it on my terms and what God got for me, God got for me. And I just stayed down with that. I came back. I did a few mixtapes. Again, I'll just do the mixtape. I'll put it out through different channels. But again, it was, I didn't know a lot about PR. And, you know, I, I had a good name. I had good relationships. But, you know, I didn't have either. I, I Either I, did, I had the knowledge. Put it this way. When I had the money, I didn't have the knowledge. When I had the knowledge, I didn't have the money. You know. Um, but I put out independent projects. I put out some good mixtapes. They did very well. And I think that kept me somewhat relevant, not forgot, forgotten about. Cause I would, I, when I do drop a mixtape, I do good on the internet. I do good on the blogs. Um, and, and basically I think, um, I, after releasing my first independent album, which was Walker Testimony, my first studio album i did a joint venture with amalgam digital my son died sorry to hear that yeah my my son died um three days before her due date nine pounds three ounces caden and it it took a lot out of me Mm. it took a lot out of me um so i would still record but to to be honest i kind of i fell in a dark place you know i went back to the street to be honest with you like like I'm trying to do right and God, this is what you give me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it was just, it was weird because I had like certain enemies coming out the cut. Like I, I read certain things, you know, for all of the dirt that you did, your son deserved to die. Like it was crazy. Like, and I ain't used to that. I'm not used to people feeling like they could say whatever they want to say to you, man. Like, and you get away with that. 
you know, and that's something famous with this computer era. Right. You know, but getting you, you know, that took some, some getting used to, but I came out, I came out with, um, the struggle mixtape after that, that did real good, mm-hmm. um, featuring, um, I had Asher Roth up there, some great production by Knotts. Um, the mixtape and the videos that came with that mixtape, collectively over a million views. Um, and that's when I really learned about being independent um, and approaching that aspect, having a PR and putting campaigns together and really getting into the visual aspect of things. And so I came back with um, DonForquan.com, launched my website of the same. Um, and that's D O N F E R Q U A N dot com. Um, launched that as well as a mixtape. And that mixtape did real good. And I, I made all the top blogs, Vibe, Billboard, Karen Civil, Frank 151, all hip hop. You know, I got a lot of love, man. Um, just enough to let me know, keep going. Like, this is what you do, this is what you are. And that's what I did over time, man. I just got better at my production, better at my engineering challenging myself to get better at singing, you know, um, better at rhyming, you know, just all around artists. Cause at the end of the day, I'm not just, I'm not a, just a hip hop artist. I'm an artist. I do music, you know, you, there's no way in the world you can put me in a box. The only thing you can say is I, I definitely speak about the struggle. I'm grounded in that because I, I, I know that like the back of my hand, but that's not the only thing that you're gonna hear me rap and sing about. You know what I'm saying? I'm a- so many people could understand if you didn't make it out of a place that dark. Your, your son passing away, and to the point where you're blaming God for it. Uh, that's some pretty strong lingo to have to take from over the internet. Like for all the dirt you did, this is your karma. Did it ever come a time when you started to believe that? Yeah, I, I did some things. Um, I wasn't a bad person. I've done some bad things, but I wasn't a bad person. I ain't never been no troublemaker, you know. So my story goes, my story runs deep. I think a lot of people know that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, It's a blockbuster, a couple of blockbuster movies, part one, part two, and three, you know. But at the end of the day, um, you can't please everybody. And you're going to have some some enemies. You're going to have some friends. You know what I'm saying? They talked about Jesus. So I know a street, a street nigga ain't got a shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so at the end of the day, um, at times, but I, I know God don't work like that. Um, Like a little, a, a joint I, I recently wrote, I said, you can find me in the world when with this weary soul of mine, a body in the morgue of the North Pole, still ain't froze as I am. Here follow codes to the toes of a polar. Simply put, it ain't a motherfucker colder. Now at this point, you think it's more braggadocia. Cause as a rapper, nigga, your condition I'm supposed to. Well, hell, not this time. Got a lot of shit on my plate and more shit on my mind. I'm in the four corner room. Fighting with the demons, face to the heavens, still hustling with the heathens. And these days I barely cry if a baby die. And I believe that that became when my baby died. Mad at God, but I still couldn't question him. Cause he delivered most times that I requested him. Can't love a rose without the thorns, could you? Well, you ain't real if you would. Now would you? Really admit it if you did, knowing the painful positive is way better than the negative. I bathed in bloodshed to write these scriptures. I used the blood of lost homies to paint these pictures. I've been around long enough to see my OGs old and seen some of their sons grow to reap the shit that we sow. Nephew got life, the other one a killer. Niece got murdered, the youngest a drug dealer. And the shit get real, I had to write it in cold. Could go to war and get indicted by some killers who told. Ten plus years, still lurking for the perfect time. To ride and blow his motherfucking mind. It's just, you know. Point being, I've been around. <laughs> I've been around long enough to see some things, man. And to know that God don't work that way. But as long as you keep living, there's gonna be there's gonna be some things, man. And I just go ahead. No, I'm listening. There's gonna be some things, man. And from my point of view, I feel like God put me here to be a messenger. You know, that's why I got multi talents. 
musicianship, singing, rapping, writing, mm -hmm. multiple f faucets to express the testimony that I was given. Have you left the streets alone completely now? Are you are you out of that world? Or? Yeah, man. <laughs> that's a lot of that's a big cheese. Was <laughs> come on, man. Like, yeah. I mean, as much um, as you can, I, I would imagine you're still. I mean, connected and attached somehow, some way. Like, um, it, it's funny because as far as me putting myself in jeopardy. To do anything crazy, nah, I ain't. I'm not. I'm not with that. But you're talking to a person who spent a large part of his life in the streets from the system as a youngin, you know, to adulthood. Um, and so the network is there because I grew up with. You know, uncles that was in the life. My daddy was in the life. Like, a lot of my, my friends were in the life, got life. You know, so in that aspect, it's a choice that I made not to be in the streets. Put it that way. So what's your thoughts when you're in the music business and all you hear is the glorification of the thing you decided to leave behind? From, from record to record to record, Catching a body seems to like not be a big deal and shooting doesn't seem to be a big deal and we carry choppers and we this and we that. It ain't though. It ain't though. Um, I listen to all kinds of music. Let me start there. So it depends on what I'm listening to and who I'm listening to. Like Young Thug, if I listen to Young Thug records, what I'm listening to him for is what I look to his music for. If I put on Gucci, same way. If I put on Marvin Gaye or Stevie Wonder, you understand the vibe, the lane. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I don't really worry about what the next person is doing, bro. Um, I, I don't because it's so m many fakes and there's so many reels. I just I I don't even I don't even worry about what the next person doing. All I know is if that's what you talking, you just got to be prepared to stand on it, you know? Um that's it. I I just I I just speak on the struggle me myself. I ain't with all of that extra rah rah, but if you bring it you going to get it. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't I just want to make good soul music, man. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, I want somebody to be able to tap into what Quan doing and be like, yo, I, I I rock with that. You know, and if you don't, hey, that's on you. Even outside of a social setting though, even from just a musical standpoint, you gotta look at the landscape. I can only think about what's going through your head. Somebody who's actively trying to get better at singing, actively working to be the best rapper, actively working on engineering, producing, et cetera, et cetera, to be multifaceted, multi-talented. And then to see what's accepted by the masses from time to time, people who seem to just do the bare minimum enough to get by. But they might have worked hard somewhere else. I guess for me, I'm I'm not a hater. It, it, it I'm not I'm not that. I'm the dude that pull up feel good about my car, see you in a Bentley, and throw the thumbs up like, you, you, I'm that dude, I'm not a hater. And I try to, I don't even, bro, I don't even, I don't even waste my time on certain things because at the end of the day, we go back to what I said first. Everything that we're talking about is based on the individual. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. You know, like I tell somebody, hey, I would love to sell millions of records, but I'm happy if 50,000 people a year choose to listen to what Quan got to say. And I feel like they respect my craft enough to support it, be it mm -hmm. a $10 download, $5 download, $15, $20 show ticket, $10, $15, $20 t-shirt. At the end of the day, that puts me in a position to invest, 
keep investing in the empire and more importantly take care of my family and my kids and i believe i deserve that because i put my blood and my sweat and my tears into this music but at the end of the day i can't be mad at somebody like soldier boy who is worth 20 million because guess what it was millions of people that decided to tune in mm -hmm. and compensate that person and that goes for any other artist if you find your demographic, I just be man and woman enough to stand on what it is that you're talking about. If you can do that, it's, it's on you. It's on you. I mean, for real, because it's some niggas that wear dresses. Some niggas that it's some people. <laughs> it's weird, man. But hey, whatever is yours, do you? Just don't disrespect me, man. Mm -hmm. Don't don't try to cripple what I got going on in, in in the spot that I'm trying to carve out for me and mine for those who rock with me don't 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 mess with that because I'm not gonna do that to you you know mm -hmm. and and that's been my thing that's why I, I chose to venture out I'm gonna I'm a do records for not just myself I do them for other people I do them for movies you know things like that and that's how I started getting the placements and they've been picking up you know, I've been blessed. Um, the first movie, well, the first television joint that I got was um with The Wire. I did, I had a um, placement on The Wire, HBO. Um, then I did uh, a few independents, and then I came back, Generation Iron, I did a verse for them. That's the same um, film company, um, Vladar Film Company, they did Fahrenheit 9-11. Mm -hmm. um, so then he came with the Hurt Business movie that's out now, available on iTunes. The premiere is on um, Netflix, February 1st, narrated by Kevin Costner. You got Ronda Rousey in there, Rashad Evans, um, Chuck Liddell, um, a lot of top UFC and MMA fighters. But my song, Warrior's Way, became the um, theme song for that movie. And um, that's... That's how, you know, it just started picking up. And um that that's about to drop too. Would you ever come back to I mean see here's the thing. A lot of a lot of artists these days forget that there are other revenue streams to even hit as far as merchandising, placements, et cetera, et cetera, production. They forget that there's anything other than being on this side of the microphone and spitting raps to crowds. Um are you off that from here on out will there be more you know quan tours because this is I, i've seen artists go down this road and it's so much simpler to just write it and be done with it for me um i am music so ain't nothing like for me as an artist giving you pieces of my life and packaging it up to tell a story putting it out and then traveling and vibing with a crowd. Right. Like to me, that's the holy grail. Ain't nothing like being on stage and hearing people recite those words, you know. Um, but at the same time, I'm well aware that I have to build different financial and financial revenue streams um mm -hmm. for me and my family. So um it's cool. I, I, my thing is, if I can drop an album or two a year, you know, an EP, a mixtape, um, different things like that. Like for this year right here, I got a few records coming out. Generation Iron 2 coming out. I got the mm -hmm. lead record off of that and possibly one other. Um, still working on that. But I also got my son. He's about to turn 11. He's super nice. My goal is to put out a five, six song EP on him, or at least a couple of strong singles. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at it from where he's going to be when he's 13, 14, 15, right. starting now. Um, but I also got a book, you know, that I'm still editing, but I want to do a documentary and a project to go with that um, as well. But it's just, those are the plans that I have for this year. You know what I'm saying? It's just plan, plot, strategize, execute, and utilize in different avenues. Um, if it's movies, if it's uh, 
whatever, bro. I'm just here to make great music and um, give whatever it is. My eye for fashion. If I find a home for it and you like it, cop it. If you don't, it's okay. Um, but more than anything, my goal is to make my, my company, King's Nation, um, a solid record label um, that's pro artist, um, as well as a multi, you know, a, a, a multifaceted um, company and um, media and entertainment company. Outside of that, though, music supervision, um, scoring movies, things like that on my downtime. You know, when it's my turn to take my kids to practice or school and things like that. When I'm not on the road, when I'm not promoting, mm -hmm. that's that's where I'm at with it. Any possibility of another collab with Nas? Who knows? Maybe. Hmm. I don't see why not. Me and, me and Nas had a great personal relationship, man. It's the business that got in the way of things, you know? And I don't know. I, I think we both grown as people, man. We was definitely, everybody know me and son was, that was my dude, man. You know, it's just a lot of bullshit got in the way, but I think, I think so. And if not, hey, man, it was great while it lasted, man. He, he doing him, I'm going to do me.